Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to create some sparks with particles. And that means we're also going to look into a little bit of collisions, right? And that's a lot of fun. So let's dive right in. Um, as in any case, pretty much with particles, you need an emitter object. And what emits sparks? Well, let's just do a sphere, okay? So usually it's something that like collides to metals colliding or whatever. But for now, I'm just going to choose a nice sphere. So select your cube and just press delete and shift a mesh and UV sphere, right? Mouse and just shade this smooth, right? Beautiful. So this is now our emitter object and let's just scale this down a little bit. We can also just scale this in edit mode actually to prevent having to apply the scale and everything. Um, so just scale this down in edit mode. There we go. And then GZ, move this up a little bit. Now I'm going to hit shift A, mesh and plane. And this is going to be our collision object pretty much. So press tab and scale this up a little bit. There we go. Um, I'm actually going to move this down just slightly. There we go. So then let's add some particles. So go to your particle tab, hit plus, and we want an emitter. And if you play this, you can see what is happening, right? It's beautiful. Some um, emitter particles falling down onto our plane. Um, now it's going through our plane, of course, because we haven't done anything yet to set this up properly. Um, but we can actually just select our plane, go to the physics tab, and select collision. And there we go, right? And you will see that we got all of these particle settings for our particle system, right? So this all defines what our particles do when they hit our object. So if I play this now, you can see that they are going to be bouncing off, which is not really um, spark-like, I guess. I mean, they bounce off, but they don't keep on bouncing. Um, so I'm guessing we need to do a little bit of customization here. Um, but first of all, sparks usually are very fast, right? If something collides, sparks fly off very fast as well. Um, so we can just go to a particle system tab. So let's just select that. We can select the sphere. Um, let's rename this to emitter. And let's rename our plane to collider, just so we can find it easily in, the, in our outliner. So select your emitter object, go to your particles, and let's just open up the velocity tab. And let's go to frame one. Um, and now we can actually add a little bit of normal velocity. Um, or we can add, normal velocity is basically going to mean that our particles are going to be emitted in every direction, according to the normals of our sphere, which is not really what I want in this case. In this case, I want a little bit of Z velocity, right? So let's just set this to minus five and so let's set the normal to zero. And now they will just be um, emitted downwards. We can randomize this, perhaps just all the way to two. There we go, right? Beautiful particles emitted onto our um, collision object. So uh, let's now give a little bit of customization to our collision. And that is done in our emitter object. So let's select that, or sorry, in a collision object, physics. And we can damp it, we can kill our particles, have it stick. And um, I don't really want them to stick on our surface. Um, but we can add a little bit of damping, I guess. Um, so they won't bounce up this high. Um, so let's set the damping to be 1. And I'm just going to set my end frames to 50. And that way we can just keep on playing this and see what happens. So <laughs> that's a little bit of... That, that's a lot of damping, actually. Um, I think I set this way too high. It is between 0 and 1, right? So let's set this to 0.1. And um, that is not a lot as well. 0.5. That's looking a little bit better, I suppose. Um, if you want this to be accurate, of course, look at some reference images. And I want my particles to die off as well when they are moving back up, right? So they don't have to bounce two times. Sparks usually go out quite quickly. Um, so we can actually just do that in the lifetime of our particle system. So select your emitter and let's set a lifetime of like, when are, when is the first bounce? We can just see that, right? First bounce is right about frame 15. And what I'm going to do first is set all my 
particles to start approximately at the same time, right? As if two objects are colliding and they instantly portray all of these sparks. So I'm gonna set my frame start at one and my end at around five frames, right? And you can see it's a lot. Let's set this to 100 perhaps. And let's see how that looks. All right, so there we go. That looks a little bit better already. Okay, and then we can set the end time to around, let's see where they bounce and where they will die off. Something like here, frame 18. So the end is gonna be a, um, sorry, the lifetime is gonna be 18. And let's add our randomization of point three. Okay, let's see, uh, maybe point five would work better. Let's see, there we go. That's looking quite decent, I'd say. And perhaps we even want more speeds, but for now, this is quite fine. So now we want some um, some objects to be displaying these sparks. Right now, they are just the um, the halos, I think they're called. Um, oh, we can see that under the render tab here. And um, usually they are rendered as a halo, but we can set this to be an object, a path, a line, whatever, collection as well. Um, so sparks, we can just set that to be... Let's see, shift A, mesh, icosphere, right? I usually go with an icosphere whenever I want round particles and I will just set the subdivisions to one because these sparks are gonna be moving fast and I want some motion blur with these sparks as well, right? And that means that we won't really see the shape. So I'm just gonna use a subdivision of one, right mouse, shade smooth, and let's move this out of the way. There we go. And in the edit mode, your scale is down a lot. There we go, beautiful. F2 to rename this to be Particle. Is that how you spell it? Particle, there we go. Now in our emitter, we can actually set our render as an object to our Particle. Particle, there we go. So now if you play this, you can barely see them. So we need to scale them up slightly like that and add a little bit of scale randomization as well. There we go, beautiful. Right, and perhaps we need a little bit of more of these sparks. Let's set this to 300, and there we go. Beautiful. Okay, so <laughs> right now you may not see a lot, um, but we will once we add a little bit of light, right? So let's just go to Cycles, GPU, and let's go to Rendered View, see how all of this looks. All right, amazing. Um, I'm going to set my world to be a no strength, zero because I want all my strength to come from my particles, right? Just to see how it looks. Um, because these are, of course, going to be glowing a little bit. Um, delete the light in the scene. There we go. And select our particle, material, new. And we can just set this to be an emission and set the color to be orangey, something like that. And perhaps stronger as well. So they actually add a little bit of light onto our surface there. Now, what could be cool is to set your collider material to be black too, with a little bit less roughness. All right, so they bounce nicely and get a nice effect there, right? Amazing. So let's just set up a camera real quick and see how all of this looks. Um, and actually, I may just want to add some more objects to have some more interesting bouncing effects, right? So let's hit shift a mesh cube scale that down and let's just set that cube at a place where some of our particles are also going to be falling right you can see they're going to be falling right there let's go back to solid view and um, so this cube is now going to uh, be used as a collision object so let's just scale this a little bit as well there we go let's rotate this slightly just so we get a bit more randomization in how this is going to bounce Right. Oh, and what we could do actually is just let's just delete this. Let's just select our face. Let's add a subdivision modifier, subdivision surface. Set this in front of the collision. Set this to simple and set this to like six. And add, let's say, um, a displace. Add that in front as well. Hit new and go to your texture tab and set this to be clouds. And it is a little bit strong, and don't get me wrong, but we can just decrease that in a modifier panel, decrease your strength, something like that. Go back to your texture and set the size to be larger. 
like that, right mouse and shade smooth. And let's see if that creates a little bit of a more interesting bounce. Uh, you can really tell, but I guess, I guess it's helping. Let's up the strength a little bit, see how it looks if we add more strength. Right, so you can see it's, it's a little bit more crazy. It goes out a bit more. And there's a bit too much strength though. So let's just add a tiny little bit there. Beautiful. And I'm going to add a nice camera. Shift A, camera. And Control Alt Numpad 0 to get the camera at the place where you are right now. Something like that, I guess. Beautiful. R, X, X to rotate around the local axis. And let's see, bouncy, very bouncy, beautiful. Um, let's zoom out a little bit by holding middle mouse and just moving your mouse back and forth. There we go. And we can actually see how this looks, right? Go to render view, press Ctrl B and draw a box around your camera that will limit your render around your camera. You can see that we now have some sparks colliding with our objects, right? Quite beautifully. Something like that. Usually I would love to move my camera closer and to get a little bit of motion blur in there as well. So let's just try that. Let's remove it right into our particle system. And um, it is going to be a little bit chaotic in that case because we can't really see what's happening. So perhaps I'm not going to do that. And let's just play around with the motion blur instead, I suppose. Right, so what's happening? Where are we? Zoom out a little bit more even. There we go. All right, that's beautiful. I'm going to go to my emitter and set my randomization to like one because I think they are spreading out a bit too much, perhaps. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And what I'm gonna do is perhaps give this a little bit of a side velocity as well. Like we can make it start here. And now if we play this, it's gonna go down, of course, right? Um, but if you want this to go to the side, we can just add a little bit of, let's re-enable our overlay, a little bit of Y velocity, right? And we can do that very easily the way we also added that Z velocity, add a little bit of minus two, perhaps. Perhaps that will do. Um, a bit more, minus five, minus five, there we go. That's looking better, right? And I think it is still going up too much. So I'm gonna select my collision object and just go to my um, collision modifier thingy, yeah, the physics tab, and let's add a bit more damping, five. And that's a little bit of randomization too. So some particles will um, stay more and some will fly away more, right? That is actually looking quite nice. And let's move our camera so we're actually in the spray more of these particles. I think that could look quite cool. Something like that, move this down a bit more. Let's see how it looks. All right, that is quite nice. Let's see how it looks when it's emitted. Right, so they are flying to the camera. That could be quite cool once we render this with a little bit of motion blur. Um, let's select our camera and let's add a little bit of a depth of field. Select the object to be, um, actually I'm just going to select a distance. Right? And let's decrease our f-stop as well. Something like that. Let's select our distance so that some of these particles are more in focus than others, right? Something like that. That's actually quite nice, right? So if we play this now, the start will be nicely in focus. But once they fly to the camera, they are going to be more and more blurry, right? So that is quite interesting. Beautiful. All right, so of course, we also need a little bit of motion blur just because this all is moving quite fast. Right, and let's see, I may just want more particles. Why not? 500, there we go. And let's add a bit more randomization in the velocity again. There we go. There we go, isn't that beautiful? All right, so let's try this out with a little bit of motion blur. And motion blur is found in your um, render settings. 
right? You can motion blur, you can just enable that. And the shutter time basically um, sets the amount of motion blur, okay? Um, so if you have this at zero, your shutter is going to open and close very fast. If you set this to one, they're going to take more time to open and close, which means you have more motion blur by general. So let's set this at 0.5 and just see how this looks. You can see it in the viewport, but you can see it if you just run a quick render. Let's set our samples to be 32. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. All right, so this is the outcome. You can already tell that this is way more sparky, way more spark-like and because of that motion blur. And um, we could even add a bit more. Right now I went with 0.5, right? So let's go back to our motion blur. There we go, 0.75. There we go. Let's render it and see how it looks. All right, so that is looking really, really cool. So I'm gonna use that as my motion blur. The last thing I'm gonna do is tweak the material of my particle just slightly to be more emissive. Like 10, add a bit more orangey perhaps, nah. Nah, I think something like that works fine. There we go. And should we add more particles? <laughs> I keep adding more particles, it's funny. Um, let's just add a thousand. And let's just scale our particles down slightly as well. All right, let's go to the render, set the scale to be 0.25. And let's see how that looks. All right, perhaps we need a lot more in that case if we scale it down. Ah, oh, I set it to 100. 1,000. There we go. I think that's looking a bit better. All right, a lot more particles. This with all looks streaky as well once we render that. And let's just, um, our emitter objects, we can actually hide that in our particle tab. Go to your particles, I go to render, and show emitter, turn that off. And there we go. You know, you will still see it in the viewport, but once you render this little animation of 50 frames, or 50, we can even lower that. Right, we got an animation of 30. Let's do 30 frames, 30. Um, then we can just render that out. Um, but first, let's bake this just to make sure our render is going well, right? So we have a cache setting in our particle tab. Go to cache. So sometimes before you bake, you can see that there's still a red line here, which means something is already baked. So you can try to just up or down the emission count um, just to clean the cache and then you can bake it. There we go. And you can see beautifully it speaks so the the reason why it's stopping here is because all the particles are dying after like frame 18 right so it doesn't really need to calculate more than that but let's just make sure that it's going to show our particles till the end right why not so let's set the lifetime to like 24 that should do the trick bake it and there we go right so now we have particles throughout the entire thing beautiful all right i'm gonna render this and then we'll be done. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned anything, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We will enjoy any one of those. And then we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.